Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with. I'm going to start with the main speaker first. There's no way of knowing who comes first, who comes last. But you remember, once we commit to a delay locator value, we leave that delay locator value alone. There's no touching the delay locator after we commit to a value. Okay. So let me set the gain structure. Good coherence, look at that. Okay? We're measuring speaker, not moving lights, not beamers. And no fans. So why does the high frequency section went all foobar? Where foobar means fucked up beyond any recognition. Yes, I'm only like a gazillion degrees off axis. Does it matter for this exercise? No, because I'm not trying to time align these frequencies to the subwoofer. I'm trying to time align these frequencies to the subwoofer. I couldn't care less what happens over here. This is not part of the exercise. The reason that I'm trying to do this in half space is because then at least you will always <laughs> avoid one reflection <laughs> which is that nasty floor bounce, because you became one with the floor. That we now committed ourselves to, this is now off limits, okay? There's no more changing this after now. Now we look at our subwoofers, and I imagine that if the polarity of these speakers, when we change that to have the phase stretch run at zero, I'm going to do this intuitively as well, okay? But maybe I'm wrong, because this manufacturer chooses to reverse the polarity for all the products to make them compatible to their legacy products. So let's mute our main speaker and unmute the subwoofer. Well, that's interesting. We'll talk about this later. First, we're going to make our levels match, something more reasonable like this, which would give us a unity crossover at 100 hertz. Does everyone see that? It also means that we need to lower the subwoofer level by 8 decibels, which means that I go to my processor. I prefer to do these kind of things in the matrix. I will make that minus 38. If I now press enter, we have what we call a unity gain. And here at 100 Hertz, you can beautifully see minus 6 meeting minus 6. The next exercise is always identifying the range of interest. And here's how I do that in part 1. I introduce a 10 dB offset, and that makes it appear like we're equally loud at 125 Hertz, but that is covertly with a 10 dB offset. Then I lower the trace by 10 decibels, and that makes it appear like we're equally loud at 80 hertz. I have identified the frequency range of interest where we need to be in time. And let's focus in on this area. Okay, and let me highlight that area. This is where the timing matters. So, why does it only matter over there? Why doesn't it matter over here? Isolation. Because from here on, the main speaker dominates by 10 decibels or more, and we are in the isolation zone. Why is it not important that we are phase aligned over here? Isolation, because from here on, the subwoofer dominates by 10 decibels or more. Isolation. This is the frequency range where it matters, and this is top of the combing zone. This is where you're equally loud. If you do not make sure that you're in phase over here, well, buckle up. 